We asked Kathy Pilkington for a link from her work, and she'd made a series of figures called Degas Dolls, based on Edgar Degas. So I thought this is going to be easy, a trot through the master of horses and ballerinas. Instead, Kathy asked us to link to this, Le Deme Poupe by Hans Belmer, made in 1971, just four years before his death. And what an odd life. Frankly, I'm grateful that she chose this. It's one of the more appealing of Belmer's images. I mean, I'm watching the box sets of Hannibal at the moment and against some of his work, well, I might as well be watching You've Been Framed. If you put this alongside the pieces from Kathy Pilkington's Thing Soul collection, you can see the influence the German artist has had on her. Pilkington's figures are slightly softer, but you still wouldn't want to wake up and see them looking at you from the foot of your bed. Trust me, we are heading into the land of nightmares. Le Demi Poupe, or Half Doll, has all the hallmarks of a Belmar sculpture. A mutated or maybe mutilated figure with one leg, one breast, gender and age hinted at through that bow, the school sock, the Mary Jane shoe, and the head, what do you see? Tip of a penis? Buttocks? Either way, you might want to book an extra hour with your therapist this week. Dark, erotic art can do that. It can make us uncomfortable. It says, what do you see here? What does it say about you? What does this make you feel? Clarice. What does it say about the man who made it? The culmination of a life's work. Hans Belmer's peccadilloes were formed in his childhood. Doubtless, like many German fathers, his has been described as severe and humorless, but so much so that Belmer said he and his brother had been denied a childhood. As a teenager, he began to cross-dress, powdering his face, wearing lipstick, exploring his curiosity about gender, while also deliberately sending his father into a seizure. He hated that man. He moved to Berlin Polytechnic at the earliest opportunity, where he watched the rise of the Nazis, who, of course, his father eagerly supported, and made the connection between fascism and oppression when others hadn't quite woken up to it. Though it wasn't until his early 30s that it all came together. Here, he was working as an advertising illustrator, but he quit so there was no chance that his talents might assist the Nazi regime. His 13-year-old niece moved in with him and his wife, and then he went to see an opera called The Tales of Hoffman, in which a man falls in love with an automaton. The niece, Ursula, stirred sexual desires in him, and the opera gave him an idea. He created a figure, a doll, which became his life's obsession, what he called an artificial girl, capable of creating the heights of passion, even inventing new desires. Sex dolls are in movies, documentaries, and probably your bedroom these days, but not in 1932. In 1918, the artist Oscar Kokocha had a wax replica of his ex-lover, the composer Alma Mahler made, so he could um, continue to <clears throat> paint her. And as creepy as Oscar's doll is, Belmer's are deliberately grotesque. He saw them as a way to kick against the Nazi ideal of Aryan perfection, a physical form of his rejection of the Nazis and what they stood for. So that's noble intentions, but let's be clear, accusations of Belmer as a sadist, a paedophile, and someone who dehumanized women are not without grounds. His first, de Poupe, the doll, was made from wood, metal, and plaster. And once complete, he took a series of photographs of the doll being dismembered. If you think it's like something from an episode of Mindhunter, well, Belmer had recently illustrated a book on Jack the Ripper, and German newspapers were following the shocking torso murders taking place in Cleveland in America at the time. So was Belmer's art an outlet for his own illegal fantasies? Yeah, I suspect so. It's, it's important though because it reminds us art doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing, not when its purpose is to make us think and question ourselves. So I could admire Belmer's shameless ability to show us the truth of himself, even if that truth scares me. And this art of psychoanalysis goes one louder in 1935 when Belmar transformed the doll by inserting a movable ball joint in the centre, connecting the body parts. Les Jeux de la Poupée Doll Games presents another series of over a hundred bondage photographs. Stumps, bubbles of flesh, piles of limbs and genitalia. I mean, who the hell wants to play this game? Ah, the emerging surrealists, of course. In Paris, André Breton's surrealist manifesto had called for words to be cut up and rearranged. And in Belmar, they saw someone who was doing the same thing, but with the female form. And they published the photographs of the doll in the magazine Minotaur, making it a surrealist icon. The Nazis were having none of it. And soon after his wife died, Belmer fled to France, 1939. And there he drew. The doll had physical restrictions, where on paper, the only limit was his imagination. 
So he was a perfect choice as the illustrator for a new issue of George Bataille's pornographic novel, The History or Story of the Eye, the tale of the increasingly bizarre sexual perversions of a pair of teenage lovers. A 1940s edition featured six engravings by Belmar, which I would describe as anatomically unrestrained. The images have a lightness and beauty about them, but while also being shocking and unprecedented, and there's still a raw horror to them. Here, the pleats of the girl's dress, for me, merge into her like exposed muscle tissue under flayed skin. But his technical brilliance is there again in his 1962 drawings inspired by the writings of the sexual liberty in the Marquis de Sade. If you like orifices, these are for you. But there's also quite a lot of the British artist and satirical illustrator Gerald Scarfe in there too. And he stayed on paper for cephalopod, a motif of limbs and heads, what Shakespeare would have referred to as the beast with two backs. And he was seeing plenty of that with his new partner, Unica Zern. Belmer said that being a man in love made him a hermaphrodite, that in making love he wanted to fuse male and female genitalia into one organism or body. And they say romance is dead. But in Zern, Belmer had found his living doll. He posed, drew and photographed every part of her. In a series called Unica Bound, she's trussed up like meat for an oven. There's none of the, the kink or gameplay of a Betty Page S&M session here. Flesh is cut into with ropes. They look like crime scene photographs. And they raise questions about consent, especially as Zern was frequently institutionalized with schizophrenia and ultimately should commit suicide by jumping from their sixth floor Paris apartment. A year later, Belma made Le Demi Poupe, the half doll by the half man she left behind. And now that's done, I'm off to delete my search history.